This is Gary Bruff. I'm interviewing Joanne Newman on January 5th, 1989 on Catholic Schools. What do you remember about Catholic Schools? Oh, I always went to a Catholic school when I was um, five. I started school. We had the Sisters of St. Joseph, which are different than the Dominicans I had at St. Michael's, because I went to high school at St. Michael's, and we had different sisters. And uh, we, went to, we went to first grade. We had we made our first communion in the first grade, and we made our first communion or our first confession and first communion in the first grade, and we got confirmed in the second or third grade. Now they wait till high school to get confirmed. But we got confirmed when we were little, and uh, we had mostly nuns. But in the fourth grade, I had a lay teacher, uh, Mrs. Lockney. I can remember her. For a while. But we always got up and we went to Mass and then we went to class after we had went to Mass every morning before we went to class. Went to school at 8 o'clock or went to church at 8 o'clock and then our classes started at quarter to nine. And uh, I went through eight grades at Flint St. Mary's. And then we moved out into the country and went to four grades at high school, all through high school at St. Michael's Maple Grove. Um, religion was always one of the subjects we took in a Catholic school, which they don't teach in a non-Catholic school, but we always had a class in religion. So we learned more about our Catholic religion. And uh, the nuns always taught that. And Father used to come into our classes and in high school. Father Basel used to take our religion class and sometimes our Latin class because we always took Latin as a language in the Catholic school. I don't think they teach Latin in the public school, but uh, we all, that was always part of our uh, Catholic school education. Um, you talked about a lay teacher. You know what was a lay teacher? There was a one that wasn't a Catholic, or wasn't a, not necessarily not a Catholic, but a, any teacher is a lay teacher. A lay person is not a, re, a religious person. That's what a lay person means. Now, did they teach different than the nuns? Not as far as the classes, because she was our, she was our English teacher. And she taught us English, and uh, she taught us also, what else did she teach us? Oh, penmanship and English. Um, now, do you remember where the school's crowded? We had about, in our first grade, we had about 40-some children. They were pretty crowded for that time, for that time, day and age, you know. They were, quite, they were quite crowded, but there were many Catholic, there were a lot more Catholic schools then than, than, are, than there are now. Um, tell me what you remember about the teachers. About the teachers, yeah. well, uh, most of the teachers were pretty strict, but you learned to respect them, and you, and you did your work because you didn't get away with too much, with because uh, the nuns were a lot more strict than some of the lay, lay teachers are nowadays. But uh, I liked and respected everyone I had. We had one that was. We considered pretty mean because she used to use a ruler on the top of your hands for every little infraction that you had, like chewing gum or talking or whispering or cheating or and I had that a few times <laughs> so not for nothing too serious. Um, do you think it helped you that the schools were strict? Yes, I do. I think you learn a little more respect that way. I mean, in some ways maybe they were a little too strict. But I don't see that it did me any harm. What do you remember about the classroom itself? The classrooms weren't very big, and we had the the desks were really crowded into them. You know, we had the big blackboards, which now they have a lot of green ones, 
green boards, but we always had the black, and we always had to, you know, the some certain ones had to clean the boards, and and I remember we used to have to write punishments on the boards if we didn't do what we were supposed to. Now were the each grade separated in class? They were all separated when I went to Flint St. Mary's, but when we moved to St. Michael's, the ninth and tenth took classes together, and the eleventh and twelfth took classes together. Different classes like chemistry, physics, religion, Latin, and so forth. You know, we took a lot of classes together in high school. Were the guys and girls ever separated? No, it was always mixed. What do you remember about the rules? Oh, about the rules. Well, your uh, skirt had to be a certain length. There were no such thing as short skirts. We didn't have uniforms at the time when I went to school, but they did later. We didn't have uniforms as per se a uniform, but we were supposed to wear something neat and preferably a white blouse and dark skirt. But it wasn't. If you didn't have it, you didn't have to wear that. And we always wore long stockings. We didn't wear anklets. We wore long stockings. And the boys wore white shirts and ties when they went to school. And um, there was, of course, no running or pushing or shoving in the hall. And a lot of the same rules you have now, but ours were, uh, we didn't, uh, the, the halls nowadays seem a lot freer than when we were in school. But we had our... Uh, recesses and then we could play ball or but we had to leave the school I mean uh, but living in town we always most of the kids went home for lunch you didn't have to go home for lunch but if you had your lunch you could eat it in the gym or the school grounds you say most people would go home yeah because we only lived a few blocks or well see we lived about 12 or 14 blocks from home, which is about a little over a mile, which doesn't seem like it in town because when you walk blocks, it don't seem as far. Um, what do you remember about cliques? Well, <laughs> there was always certain cliques in every school. And even back then, um, certain people seemed to hang together. There was always the ones that had a little more money and thought they were a little bit better than the rest of you. And then there were certain ones that all seemed to be getting into trouble, and in some serious trouble. Some of the boys, they ran in cliques. They were all smoking when they weren't supposed to, which smoking was not permitted, was another one of the rules, but uh, I never ran into too many cliques because there were so many of us that were on the... Um, average or below income class, you know, instead of the really rich class. There were only a few of those. Do you think there were groups back then like there are now, though? Um, I, think, I think there were to a certain extent. You're more aware of it now. I don't think there's as many in the city as there is in small communities. When, you, when I moved out to Maple Grove, I hated it because it was too cliquish for me because you were an outsider and you felt like you were an outsider. Even though some made you feel welcome, you still felt like an outsider. It's just the way it is, I guess. Uh, what do you re remember about the clothes people wore? Oh, they, they, were, they, they weren't too much different. Our skirts were a lot longer and our, uh, but a lot of the clothes that we wore way back then have come back in style, so they're not a lot different than what they were, except that we never wore blue jeans. That's one thing we never wore, or the boys never wore in school. They had to wear, uh, like, dress pants, and the girls never wore pants to school, period. Outside of snow pants with a snowsuit, which they took off and had to wear their skirt or dress. Was fashion a big deal? Well, when something new came out, everybody wanted it. Back then we had muffs, which are to put your hands in to keep warm in the wintertime. Uh, those were very popular then. Earmuffs were a big thing, which they are now again. 
and uh, furry mittens and fuzzy sweaters. That was one of the fads that everybody had these big fuzzy sweaters. Do you think it's a big deal as it is now? No, I don't think. I think there's a lot more changes now. I mean, a lot. You know, one our our fads way back then, or our fashion fads, whatever you want to call them, lasted a long, long time. Where now they they last hardly any time at all, and they're into something else. In the nowadays. Uh, what do you remember about extracurricular activities? Well. <clears throat> I was, um, they had, uh, they didn't have a lot like they have now. We didn't play basketball, but we played softball, but not as only intramural with each other in school. And, uh, but I was, I learned to be a cheerleader when I was at Flint St. Mary's in the seventh and eighth grade. And then when I went to St. Mike's, I was a cheerleader for four years. Um, do a lot of people were there a lot of people attending games like there are now? Oh yes, that was that that was our big thing. Our basketball games were packed. You couldn't even hardly get in the door. I mean there are a lot our of course our gyms were a lot smaller, but we really had good turnouts because we only had basketball, baseball and football. We didn't have wrestling and track and all these others. Not in the smaller schools. In some of the bigger schools, I guess they did, but we never did. So you think were sports as big as they are now? They were a big thing, yes, as far as the sports that we had, yeah. That was one of the biggest things that we had going for us. Um, what do you remember about the low budget? In school? With the Catholic um, schools. At the Catholic school, we paid tuition and seemed to get by, but the, but the t uh, nuns taught for such a low income back then, it, did, it wasn't really a great problem because they did not take a high wage like the higher wage like the teachers have nowadays. They taught for practically nothing. So did you have a lot of materials to work with? We bought all our materials. We bought most of our materials where in the public schools you didn't have to most of them, even back then. But we had to buy everything we used, which helped, I mean, helped the budget, but didn't help us, <laughs> because we didn't always have a lot of money. Um, talking about extracurricular activities, did they have band and stuff like that? Yeah, we had an uh, orchestra, I call it, it's not, and we, they had a band too, but uh, they had the orchestra in which I played the cello. And one of the nuns, Sister Matilda, was our music teacher. And she taught uh, violin and piano, cello, and she taught a couple other things, of um, xylophone. She taught about six different music subjects. And then there was a Mr. Serhard who taught the horns the trombone and the trumpet and the saxophone. And uh, we had a really nice orchestra. And we played for when we'd, we'd put on plays and for other schools to come and see. And then we played the music, you know, like a, like a regular orchestra does at a play when you go see a play. We were the orchestra and the music. And uh, we also had um, a marching band, which wasn't very big, but it was a marching band, which the sister helped, uh, sister and Mr. Sarah Hart helped get together, which I wasn't a part of because I played a cello, and a cello was pretty big to carry around. But uh, we also had uh, we also had a choir, and we sang at different assemblies, you know, like uh, like the glee club does now, your glee club or your choral assembly, we called it Glee Club. We had Glee Club, which we went around to different other Catholic schools and sang. And uh, we used to put on plays, a Christmas play and Easter play. And, um, and, uh, it was fun. Um, like, you're talking about the nuns. Did uh, one teach you all your subjects, or did you have a bunch of different ones teaching different subjects? One taught us all our subjects. 
when we were in uh, the fir- early grades. As we got older, then we had different nuns taught different subjects. We had a different nun for like chemistry and physics and trig. And then we had uh, one nun taught us our government and our civics and economics. And then one taught us our religion and our Latin and our other subjects, you know, that we had. If they figured you were a, a pretty good student, they encouraged you to take the harder subjects. They didn't recommend, you know, that you take the... So they were pretty good in helping you that way. If they figured you were college material, they would recommend you took the harder subjects or the subjects you're going to need. And the nuns mar- marked pretty hard. They marked on a curve, which if you had, if you got a good mark, then you knew you got a really good mark because they did not mark very high. So they marked, you know, hard. But you knew if you got any mark at all, that was good. Um, a B was a good, good mark. Um, with uh, your classes, did you go from one class to another, or did you stay there and have... We stayed in our own room. You didn't have lockers or anything? No, we didn't have lockers. We had desks that opened until I was in the eighth grade. And in the seniors... We, we still had the same kind of desk when I was a senior, although we did have a, um, like a little cloakroom right in our room. That's all we ever had. And there were uh, shelves above there where we could put our things. So the, like if you had separate teachers, they'd come to your class? Yeah. Or sometimes we went to theirs. Chemistry, we had to go to the chemistry room, of course. And I caught the Bunsen burner on fire one time because my hose was kinked around, <laughs> which I had to pay for. And if we broke a beaker, we had to pay for it. <laughs> so, but we had a lot of good classes. Sister Virgil was our chemistry teacher and physics teacher. And she was uh, much, much too intelligent to be teaching in high school, which she teaches at Fordham University now and has for many, many years. And I think she's still alive. She was very brilliant way beyond all of us. Um, so we're the same people in all your classes? Same kids? Mm-hmm. We had, when I graduated, there were 19 in my graduating class, and there were uh, 15 boys, I mean 15 girls and four boys, because back then the boys used to quit school and farm. They didn't finish high school, they didn't think it was important. But as you know now, it's very important. And there's just as many boys, if not more, than girls now. But back then, there were mostly girls in all the classes, and only a few boys. The class before me, there were 12, six boys and six girls. And there was 17 or 18 in the class before that, and 19. And so in the whole high school, we only had 19, 19, is 38, and 17 is... Uh, what is that, 55, and then 12. So that's an entire high school. You had less than 100, you know. But was, was, you can see what the classes have grown to now. Was that small for a school, or is that? Very small. But that was St. Michael's, Maple Grove. That was small for a Catholic school? It wasn't really small for a Catholic school, but it was small compared to the public schools. But then a lot of Catholic kids went to the public schools, too, so... If they all went to the Catholic school, there wouldn't have been room for them all. Do you, what do you think, do you think they should, all Catholic uh, kids should go to Catholic schools? Well, not necessarily. I, I think the Catholic, Catholic, the education I got at the Catholic school cannot be, you know, there's no way you could uh, compare it to anything else because you just don't get that kind of an education nowadays. I mean... You do. You get maybe you get better in some ways, but for the discipline, the learning to get along with people, I can't, I can't uh, say it. And respect. They taught you a lot more respect, or to me they did. You know, that's the way I see it. Maybe everybody doesn't see it that way, but I do. And what I learned, I learned. I've still got it. it is that some some teachers are better than others. 
just like nuns. I mean, either some of them weren't the best teachers and some were very good. Was there a lot of Catholic schools around back then? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of Catholic schools. They were all over Flint. That's where I went to school. But there were, you know, a lot of Catholic schools back then. Okay. Now there are hardly any. Or there are some that go up to the eighth grade. Then they go to a public school, which is good, too, because by the eighth grade, they should have the Catholic teaching if that's what they went there for. And that's primarily what they go there for. And then they should be well able to get along anywhere else they go. And they should, you know, learn well. What, what would you say, like, was there a, almost a Catholic school at every church, to every church? Yeah. Back, yes, there was. Especially all the bigger churches. 